My name is Fred Aseroma. I'm a Nollywood actor. And um, yeah, I was born in Lagos um, several years back, I must say. I grew up in Lagos, um, schooled in Lagos. Um, got a BSc in chemistry from the University of Lagos. And um, I've been an actor for almost 20 years. And it's been quite exciting for me. I've delved into other things um, in the course of all of that. Um, I'm a massage therapist. Um, all my life, um, because I've got um, so much empathy for people, I've been in the business of um, entertainment, making people happy. And um, most recently, um, I take stress off people, you know, distress people with my work as a massage therapist. But I'm still an actor. I'm now a producer uh, with a couple of works coming up soon. At some point, I did it, a little bit of um, modeling. I was hot then, you know. I was known mainly as, you know, a um, model on the screen. But um, at some point, I, I felt it was something that um, I could just do easily and do better. And I, I'm someone who loves challenges. So one day I heard about an audition and Dolly Hunachuku then was doing her very, very first job, starring um, the likes of Emeka Ike and um, Emeka Inyocha. And um, I just walked up to her a day after the auditions and um, I said, look, I missed it and I feel I could do it. And um, she auditioned me and right on the spot she gave me, you know, a support lead role and um, that was it. There was no looking back after that because that was the movie Amaka Igwe saw me in and, and she cast me for that role in To Live Again and by my second movie professionally I was just the best upcoming actor in Nigeria at um, Thema Awards. Sacred Tradition. That was my first epic and um, uh, at first I didn't know it was going to be an epic because I didn't get to see the script before I went on set, you know, it all happened so quickly and then suddenly I found myself, um, you know, heading towards the bush, you know, somewhere in Enugu uh, on the day of shoot and then somehow I thought it was the usual thing, you know, go to posh, you know, going to posh houses, you know, to record, but we stopped somewhere and we started heading, you know, into the bushes on foot. And then I was like, what's going on here? You know, and then when we got to some parts, you know, there was an open space and I saw that um, things were set up, you know, you know, for production. And then it dawned on me when the costumer came and said, um, Fred, you have to take off your clothes and um, let's dress you up the traditional way, you know, the epic way. And then it dawned on me that, um, well, I was in for it. Remy just called me, uh, like two days before the production. It was like someone was supposed to take up the role and then he couldn't do it because he had to do exams in school. And then he called me. I never met Remy just before then. And then we spoke on phone and Things worked out, and um, I flew to Enugu, and before I knew it, I was in the bushes, you know, doing something I was actually avoiding <laughs> to do, and then that was it. I started an epic, and it was great, great experience for me. It was a great team they had then, and I was um, very privileged to be part of that team. It wasn't a clique, as people would say then, you know. I didn't belong to any clique, but um, I just let my work speak for me. And I was glad that um, they recognized my efforts and um, called me into the team. And um, that metamorphosed into several, several, several productions that um, I'm very proud of. Well, um, basically, I have... Um, 
Lancelot Oduwa wanted to thank for most of those efforts, you know, because he believed in me, uh, in my efforts. And um, Lancelot happens to be um, one of the best directors I've ever worked with as an actor in all my career. And uh, one thing about him is he doesn't mince words um, when he sees uh, a fantastic talent. And so most times when he has, um, when he's got um, some strong roles that requires, you know, fantastic acting, uh, he looks for me. And so when this opportunity came, he called me, I sat down with him and um, he was really, really vigorous, working with Amotala on one hand and Genevieve on the other hand. You know, I was just like, okay, in between two sisters, doing two different things. And it was like two different characters, and it, it was so exciting, very challenging, I must say. But it did come out well. Then the Lagos chapter was actually the real Actors Guild, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I was the spokesman for the actors. It was um, a very exciting um, you know, responsibility, you know. And um, I lived up to expectations and at that time uh, until, until things um, started going the other way, you know. Um, but you know how the industry is. Um, sometimes it works well, sometimes um, things just go wrong. Uh, there was a lot of crisis then, but I did my best, you know, uh, to represent the actors, you know, and um, fight for, you know, uh, the common front for the actors then. It's no longer news that things ain't the way it used to be. Uh, we would have loved, you know, to go back to those old days, you know, when competition was very rife. You know, when you're given a role in a movie, you have no choice but to give up your best, your very best. You know, we had great actors then. You know, I'm not saying that um, there are no good actors these days, but, you know, the structure wasn't... Um, uh, the structure now isn't the way it used to be. Uh, things could be better though, if there was a little bit of um, togetherness, you know, oneness. You know, these days you find out that everyone is just doing what they like. And um, I wish um, the association could be as compact as it used to be in those days, where we sort of had a common voice. You know, without a common voice, uh, we can't get things done now. And then the fact that um, finance has, you know, been a major problem in filmmaking in Nollywood. Uh, I wish the government could be part of it for real, you know, not make it so difficult, you know. Then the marketers, like we used to call them then, you know, put in a lot of money and monetize, monetize the industry. And uh, I mean, today you can compare, you know, uh, the kind of works that you know, people churn out these days to those ones of the past and you see a huge difference, you know, that um, things aren't really the way uh, they used to be, they could be better. First of all, we need money. The industry needs to be re-monetized adequately because things are moving up, you know, and you know, you want to see good productions, you want to see fantastic movies that could compete with you know, Hollywood, Bollywood, the real thing is money. If we've got the financial backup, either from government or, you know, um, well-meaning private organizations, we should do well. And then we should, you know, set the standards. Uh, because without a good standard, uh, we'll be just wasting our time, you know. I've seen a lot of, you know, wishy-washy movies around and um, it's all uh, been um, a celebration of mediocrity. And that should stop. We should be able to research before we write stories. We should be able to script adequately and let the story have a, you know, a sensible direction, okay? Uh, we should be able to, you know, um, watch the language. You know, you don't... Um, shoot an English movie and you need to subtitle it in English for people to understand what the actors are saying. Yeah, we need to work on, you know, um, issues of uh, speech. We need, you know, to improve on the marketing angle. Uh, 
because it's not just all about spending so much money and efforts producing fantastic movies. We need to get them in the market there for producers to make money. Uh, piracy, yes, uh, has to be addressed. The issue of piracy has gone so terrible that you know we can hardly sell our jobs, and the cinemas will have to, you know, uh, come to our aid. We want to make money, and um, the best way we can do that is moving the industry forward correctly and getting all the support. Well, um, from the remedies, you know, angle. Um, I was known to, you know, um, be paired up, you know, um, with um, Choma Chukuka. I did quite a number of jobs with her. Uh, we kind of had, you know, that chemistry, you know, at that time. And um, I've worked with virtually all the known actors and actresses, you know, and each one I enjoyed working with. So I do want to say, you know, I enjoyed working with this one more than the other. And um, the directors, yeah, I've worked with so many other directors, but um, yeah, I'll single out Lancelot because um, he was someone who um, believed in my abilities and um, really gave me the opportunity. And then after that, when I met my wife, I met her a director. And today, I think she's the best, you know, I've worked with in recent times because um, we're able to sit down at home, discuss the shots, you know, when you have an intelligent actor with an intelligent writer, producer, director as a wife, I mean, it's quite exciting when you get on set. That was Mike. Uh, a very boring husband to uh, a wife, who, you know, um, who was um, um, so much um, anxious to do other things, you know. And um, in eating karak mama, um, my wife um, TJ uh, was the director. And um, it wasn't that um, she produced it, but um, she was called in to direct the movie. And um, that's, that's part of what I've been saying, that um, she did quite a lot. There were artists who she impacted on, on that set, you know, that came out really well. And um, it's no surprise today that um, they are on the nomination list, you know, for Zafar Awards in different categories, you know. So um, it was huge efforts. We're doing productions of ours now. Um, we finished work on Alma Chaman, and that's a Yoruba movie. Uh, it was 80% um, shot in uh, Nigeria. Um, it's star studded. You know, all the, most of the known, you know, Yoruba artists uh, were part of it. The likes of Dele Odule, Ayomogaji, Jibola Dabo, Pakasumo and a host of uh, a host of others, and then 20% was shot here in the UK. And um, we're working on um, Man or Me, which is uh, a fantastic Yoruba comedy. Everything is going to be shot here. To live again, to live again was a masterpiece by the later Michael Igwe. Uh, I'll never forget that movie uh, because um, I was seriously drilled on that set and um, I came out really, really smoking, you know. And um, second would be uh, Sister's Love. I, that was wonderful for me. And um, next would be um, um, Games Men Play, as well as um, Sacred Tradition. That was my first epic movie. And then um, the fifth one, mm, I can't really think of the fifth one now. So let's go with just the four for now. In terms of um, energy, um, power supply, fine, 
there are no you know interruptions here, which is fantastic. Uh, and um, well, we we've got some fantastic locations in Nigeria. I must say, uh, location wise, we have the best locations in Nigeria. Let me not take that away. But over here, we've got you know we do find some nice ones, but you know. London houses are really so small. <laughs> we can play with a lot of space, you know. And then in terms of um, um, availability, artists' availability, uh, it's quite poor here because, you know, almost all the artists work. And so you have to wait for people to come back from work before you can go on set and all that. But back in Nigeria, everyone had the time to be on set the whole day, the whole week, for as long as it takes. But over here, the actors will tell you, look, I need to, to think of my work first before I can plan availability. And that slows productions down a lot over here. And then, um, well, the issue of finance, it's quite expensive here in the UK to do a quality production. In recent times, I've come to realize that um, most of the actors here uh, could do better than what they're doing now if they're a lot patient. You know, um, there's no need to rush over it. You know, there's a lot of time um, to build yourself as an actor. But you know, what some of them lack is that um, mentorship. You know, that guidance that is, you know, uh, very very important in your career. Uh, you know, as an actor, you know, in Nigeria, when we were coming up, you know, we had great, you know, uh, uh, veterans that we looked up to, and um, we didn't rush over it. Like I tell people, I, 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 I got to the top, climbing the stairs, not using the elevator. You know what I mean? So I've gone through the rudiments, and I went gradually to the top, and that's why. I am an evergreen. So if you want to be an evergreen actor, you need to be patient. You need to develop yourself. You know, don't tell yourself you can do it already. You know, get people to mentor you. There has to be a forum, you know, for us to rub minds. There has to be some level of guidance that, you know, will bring about that standard we're talking about. This is the diaspora. A lot of serious work is going on, you know, in the British, uh, black British movies, you know, what have you, you have around. But, you know, if you compare it to what I see these days, I think there's a lot of work to be done. Um, I don't have to mention anybody in particular, because as an actor, you know, if you believe in self-development, uh, you need to study every actor you see, you consider, you know, uh, fantastic. And try to grab one idea or the other from their style, you know. Um, one thing I did at the beginning was how to work. I worked hard on my facial expression. Because sometimes, even if you miss your lines on set, your facial expression could speak a lot, you know what I mean? And that's what is missing in most of the actors here. Yeah, I see a lot of flat actors here with no facial expression. And if the expression is not, you know, uh, proper on your face, then you're not sending any message, even when your lips are moving. You know, um, I've seen great actors in Nigeria, and I've had to, you know, secretly understudy them without even having contact with them. I even had you know, actors in Hollywood that I studied even without meeting them. And at the end of the day, I was able to come up, you know, with, you know, uh, 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 efforts, abilities that um, sometimes when I, when I watch myself in those movies, I, I wonder where I got those ideas from. You know, as an actor, you have to self-develop. In those days in Nigeria, um, I just go out of my way, you know, um, 
to do things that I know, you know, may come up in roles I might take up in movies. For instance, I could just jump into a bus and sit in the bus in a long journey, uh, watch the way the bus conductors behave, the drivers. Are, uh, so tomorrow when you give me a role to play bus conductor, I exactly know what to do. Uh, sometimes I might just go into the courts and sit in the courtroom and observe how proceedings are done in the courts. And so when you ask me to play the role of a lawyer, I already know what to do. So it's not, it's, it's not you know, uh, rocket science. You really need to work hard on yourself to get there. For producers, look, movie making is serious business. If you don't have money to make a movie, don't even go there. Don't waste your time, don't waste people's time. And um, I tell you, you really have to have that passion for you to be part of it. If you're just doing it just for the sake of it, don't bother. And then for actors, yeah, I've seen quite, you know, a couple of actors who have, you know, they have the ability. They only need to be given the chance and exposure. And if you're that actor out there, my advice to you is to take it easy, be patient, research, because an actor is the only one who has the opportunity uh, to be different kinds of people in one. What I mean is, as an actor, you are the only one who can be a doctor today, a lawyer tomorrow, an admiral next tomorrow, a president. So you have to be intelligent. Actors are supposed to be some of the most intelligent people in society today. You understand? And so if you're not ready for that, don't go there. Don't toy with the acting profession. It's not a place for layabouts or dropouts. You gotta go to school. You need to have something doing. And then you can do some acting. And then later on you decide whether you want to drop other professions you're involved in or professional careers you're involved in for acting. And then for the directors, a lot of people call themselves directors when they can't even be cameramen. Uh, I feel ashamed, you know, when I see some of these jobs coming out now and there's nothing to write home about their, you know, technical abilities. Um, look, if you want to be a director, you can go to school and study to be a director. You don't just jump in front of or behind the camera and call shots that you don't even know. And so it's affecting the industry, you know, negatively. Let's learn to do things more professionally and everything's going to be fine. I'm sure we can all do it together. Well, Fred Acerma, you know, it's always at your reach. On Facebook, just type Fred Acerma, uh, 2000 at yahoo.com. That's my Facebook name, uh, address, and um, I'll be there. You know, write something on my wall and then we'll take it off from there. I don't do too much of social media because I'm a little bit of a private person, you know what I mean? But um, if you want to see me, you can always see me. I'm not too far from you. And uh, I want to say a big thank you to all those people who appreciate me out there. Um, I don't know how to thank you more, but um, I'll just keep doing what I know how to do. That makes you happy a lot more. So you'll be seeing more of Freda Seruma out there.